Hello students, you are welcome to our video lecture series. Today the chapter for our discussion is chapter 1 of the book Statistics for Economics. The chapter's name is Introduction to Economics. First of all, we will start with the word economics. Do you know the economics is made up of two Greek language words, oikos and nomos. These two terms, oikos and nomos, together means to manage the household. And this household may be our own home, society or country. Actually, there are two types of activities which a household has to manage. One side, the economic activities and the other side, non-economic activities. But our subject economics is concerned only with economic activities of the household. Economic activities are those activities which are done in monetary terms. We will discuss this economic and non-economic activities after a very short period of time. First of all, consider the example. Suppose your mother gives you 500 rupees on your birthday. What will you do of that? Option 1, you may buy a dress. Option 2, you may watch a movie. Option 3, you may go to a restaurant. Option 4, you may enjoy with your friends. Option 5, you may buy books. Option 6, you may save the amount. Like there are lots of many things which you want to do as your wants are always unlimited. But resources to satisfy all those wants are limited. And also at the same time these resources have alternative uses that is many uses. So there is a problem of choice making in front of you or there is a problem of allocation of resources as the resources are limited. There will be the same case even if your mother has given you rupees 5000, 50,000, 5 lakh or even 50 lakh rupees in place of 500. Because your wishes will grow accordingly and still the result will be same. That is wants will be unlimited comparatively to 50 lakh rupees. Resources will be limited and alternative uses of resources. Now this is economics which guides us that we should choose that want which give us maximum satisfaction. So choice making was the need due to which the subject of economics emerged. Actually our want may be for economic goods and non-economic goods. Non-economic goods are those goods which are available in unlimited quantity or they are those goods whose supply is abundant or they are those goods which do not command any market price. Example of non-economic goods are air, sunshine, rain, etc. In contrast to non-economic goods, there are some economic goods also. Economic goods are those goods which are limited or whose supply is limited in the economy. Economic goods are those goods which have command price. Example of such goods are wheat, cloth, furniture, etc. In fact, most of the goods needed by a man are economic goods as their supply always remains short in relation to their demand. As we said earlier, economics is needed for choice making between unlimited wants and limited resources and this is only economic resources that is this is only economic goods which deals with the subject economics not the non-economic goods. Likewise activity in which a human being is engaged since early in the morning till late in night for satisfying his needs and comforts to remain happy and satisfied in his life can be divided into economic activities and non-economic activities. First we should know that what are non-economic activities? Those human activities which are done for self-satisfaction and pleasure 
without any intention of earning money or profit are known as non-economic activities. We have classified these non-economic activities into five categories. First non-economic activity is religious activities. Performing puja, prayer, visiting temples, mosque, gurudwara and church are religious activities. These activities are done for spiritual satisfaction and not for earning money. Second type of non-economic activities are social activities. Meeting and talking with friends and relatives, inviting them at lunch and dinner, marriage party, going on picnic and historical places with family are known as social activities. These activities are performed to satisfy the social needs of individuals, not for earning profit. Third category of non-economic activities fall under political activities. Attending meetings and rallies of political parties, meeting with political leaders are known as political activities. The objective of these activities is to participate in active politics, not earning money. Fourth type of non-economic activities are charitable activities. Those activities which are performed for the welfare of needy, weak and poor section of the society without earning any income in return are known as charitable activities. Teaching poor children, giving food to poor, donating blood are the examples of charitable activities. Next non-economic activity is parental activities. Parental activities are those activities which are done by the parents out of love and affection for their children, not for earning money. So all these five were non-economic activities. Now the turn is of economic activities. Economic activities are those human activities which are performed for the purpose of earning money and wealth. The activities of a businessman teacher, doctor, manager, advocate, hawker, etc. are economic activities. These activities are performed to earn money so that earner may use this money to purchase those goods and services that he desires. From the viewpoint of economist, all human economic activities are classified as follows. First economic activity is production. Production is an activity of increasing utility of goods and services. In the process of production, one product is converted into another product of more value and more utility. Converting raw material into finished goods is also an activity of production. Transporting agricultural goods from agricultural farm to marketplace is also an activity of production. Second economic activity is consumption. When the available goods and services are used by its users for satisfying their need, it is called an activity of consumption. Consumption activity is the base of all production activities. There would have been no production if there would be no consumption. Consumption and production both are complementary to each other, not the substitute. Third economic activity is investment. Investment is concerned with those activities which are related to production of capital goods. Because more production of capital goods will be further utilized for producing more consumer goods. For example, the production of printing press machine that is production of capital goods will be utilized for production of printing newspaper, books, etc. Fourth type of economic activity is exchange. When goods and services changed hand, this activity is known as exchange. In economics, Exchange activities is conducted through the activities of sale and purchase of goods and services. When producers and traders are selling their goods to customers, it is an activity of exchange because the consumer or customer gets goods and the seller in return gets the money exchange. 
this exchange is mostly done in terms of price or money. Prices that is what price should be charged by the seller is determined on the basis of various factors such as what is the demand, what is the supply, what are the different market conditions such as perfect competition, imperfect competition etc. And the last economic activity is distribution. Distribution is an activity of determining the monetary value of various factors of production and as we know the various factors are land, labor, capital and enterprise. The monetary value of land, labor, capital and enterprise is determined on the basis of some principles. The land's price is known as rent, labor's price is wages, for capital it is interest and for enterprise it is profit. Recognizing these all economic activities as important aspect of economics, the economist Chapman has stated that economics is that branch of knowledge which studies consumption, production, exchange and distribution of wealth. We have already described various economic activities and also realized the importance of these activities. Therefore, Economics may be defined as a science which deals with the money and wealth. There are different opinions of the different economists on the meaning and definitions of economics. These definitions are categorized in four manner. Economics is a science of wealth. Second, economics is a science of material welfare. Thirdly, economics is a science of choice making and fourthly, Economics is a science of growth. First of all, wealth definition. Adam Smith, the father of economics, defined economics as a science of wealth. According to Adam Smith, economics is an inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of a nation. But unluckily, wealth definition of economics was not accepted because it ignored human welfare and moral values. Wealth definition focused only and only on wealth. Secondly, material welfare definition. According to this definition, focus was shifted from wealth to the welfare of the human being. According to this thought, money should be treated as a resource and not as an end. Marshall and A.C. Pigou advocated this thought. According to them, economics is the study of ordinary life of a man. Though the definition given by Marshall was better than given by Adam Smith, but this welfare definition was also not appreciated. As economics is not restricted to material things only, non-material things like health education do have equal importance. So later on came the scarcity definition. Professor Lionel Robbins supported this view. He emphasized that as wants are unlimited, resources are limited and also have alternative uses, so this is economics which deals with choice making. The next approach was the growth definition. According to modern economist Professor Paul A. Samuelson, both the problems concerning nature of scarce means and their proper use are the subject study of economics. Problems of the present use of scarce resources is mainly a problem of choice making and the problem of their future growth is a problem of economic growth. Consequently, Economics is concerned with choice making and economic growth both. These were the different definitions of economics. So students, we will keep our chapter till here today. Let's revise what we have done today. We started the chapter with the meaning and need of economics. Then we did economic activities and non-economic activities and their different types. 
next economic goods and non economic goods lastly the most important part the different approaches to the definition of economics so students it was all for today in our next lecture we will discuss the nature of economics that whether economics is a science or an art or both and in our next lecture we will discuss the introduction of statistics also that's all thank you